Up for today's review, we have the Galax GT710 itty bitty teeny weeny graphics card. Since I knew that this thing can at all compare to any of the other GPUs that I've tested, such as the Galax GTX 950 or PowerColor R7 370, I decided to take a different approach with this video. We're going to see how well the GT710 stacks up against the integrated GPUs on the AMD A10 7850K and Intel Core i7 6700K. So let's get started. Before we get into the data, let's at least take a quick look over this tiny card. It's a single slot GPU with a minuscule heatsink and a tiny fan. Like many other small form factor GPUs, you can remove the VGA output to reduce it to a dual output card, and Galax is gracious enough to include its brackets in the box to help with this. Besides the VGA output, there's also an HDMI port as well as a DVI output. There's no power input necessary since the card draws a maximum of 19 watts, well below the 75 watts that the PCIe slot will provide. The card comes with a core frequency of 954 megahertz and a memory clock of 1600 megahertz on one gigabyte of GDDR3 memory. Regardless of its deficient and outdated specs, I actually got quite a decent overclock out of the card. I was able to bump the core clock up by 350 megahertz, a whopping 36%, and the memory I pushed up another 900 megahertz, a flipping 56% overclock. Not bad at all. To give this GT710 the best chance possible against the integrated GPUs that I would be pitting it up against, I only compared the benchmarks that the 710 put out while at its max overclock. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get all of my standard benchmarking games to run on the integrated GPUs, so the testing field is smaller than normal, but suffice it to say that the GT710 puts up some sad results. The A10 7850K with its R7 200 series class GPU blows it out of the water, and the Intel HD 530 on the 6700K puts it to shame as well in every single game. Even a gigantic overclock on this card couldn't save it from getting slaughtered. And it's also important to keep in mind that with the exception of League of Legends, every game was run at its lowest possible graphical preset. Which leads me pretty well into my conclusion. I was talking the other day with my friend about the fact that I was benchmarking this card, and when I told him the results, he made a pretty interesting point. He said that the GT710 suffers from poor marketing and branding. It shouldn't be labeled as a graphics card at all, because it can't compete in terms of gaming and its graphical processing abilities when compared to GPUs that CPU manufacturers give to you for free. So instead of calling it a graphics card, it should rather be labeled as a display adapter, because that's really all it's good for. I mean, there's only a couple of use cases that I can really think would necessitate buying this card. The first is if you're building a home theater PC and the iGPU on the processor you bought doesn't support 4K video decoding and you need that for your 4K content consumption. The second use case is if you're overclocking your RAM or you just have really high frequency RAM and it gives your iGPU the fits, an issue that the HWBot World Tour ran into during the overclocking workshops. They weren't able to enable XMP profile on the 3466MHz RAM because it would cause the iGPU to lock up. So a GT710 would have been a low cost solution to fix that. But honestly, that's about it. The 629 Rand card isn't at all worth the money if you're looking to play modern games. Sure, it might get you acceptable results on some MOBAs or other games, but it's not suitable for gaming in any mainstream title that's been released in the past couple of years. And in fact, you can likely find a used graphics card that costs just as much and would be better for gaming, like this GTX 460 over on Carbonite that's going for only 500 grand. The overall point isn't to say that this card doesn't have its place, but rather, if you're buying it, make sure that you know its place isn't gaming. And with that conclusion, I'd like to give a big thanks to WooWare for sending this Galax GT710 over for review. Whether you need a display adapter or some of Galax's gaming capable graphics cards, WooWare has the selection and prices that you need for your system. They're constantly adding new items to their inventory and their customer support strives to make sure that you're taken care of from the moment you go to their site. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wooware.co.za and woot up your life. 
And that wraps it up for this video. Like this video if you found it helpful. Dislike it if you think that I treated the GT710 unfairly. And please leave a comment down below letting me know as to why. Subscribe to stay up to date for all of my similar tech related videos. And if you're looking to watch more of my content, you can check out this review I did right here of a low end but gaming capable graphics card, the PowerColor R7 370. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.